103,000 in person, 90 million watching on television, countless millions listening on radio. The Roman circus was never so grand. Few teams were ever as intimidating as the 1976 Oakland Raiders, and their hardest hitters were Jack Tatum and George Atkinson. George Atkinson, when well, well, he had a head of a little hook, George wasn't really big enough to take on some of those fullbacks and guys, so he would come in from the side and just hook them right across the face, in the eyes, in the nose, under the chin. And he was great at it, and he did it with the power. You can see the receivers kind of pulling up. You can see it in the eyes. You can see fear in the receiver's face. The tough ones hang tough in there, but the ones that don't have a lot of heart, they give it up. Even star tight end Russ Francis had trouble going up against Atkinson in the 1976 playoffs. George popped Russ Francis right in the nose, broke his nose, it bled the whole game. I said, George, why did you do that? He said, well, that guy's 6'5", 230 pounds, and I'm 5'11", 180, and I just had to let him know that that's the way it's going to be today. George, one of the great conversationalists in the game. <laughs> and when he gets excited, well, he gets going like a magpie. The Raiders' hardest hitter was the assassin, free safety Jack Tatum. Tatum's shots sounded different. Most guys tackle, and you hear shoulder pad, there's a certain sound you make. But a Tatum tackle was like a car wreck. We used to keep score, one point for a limp off, and that would be semi-concussion-y when they'd limp off and stumble around and stuff. But a knockout was like Tatum's specialty. Jack would come up with the head under the chin and uh, the guy would be gone. I've caught receivers looking for me instead of looking for the ball. If you can get a receiver thinking about you, but then he can't be concentrating on you and the ball at the same time. Consequently, sometimes he may drop a few. Both Tatum and Atkinson deeply resented the Pittsburgh Steelers' attempts to portray them as criminals. I think George has proven himself on what kind of a person he is as far as his play on the field. I mean, George doesn't look like he's going to change his style of play, and if the league doesn't do anything, well, who knows? They do have the power to kick a guy out of a ball game if they feel he's going to commit these type of acts. The Steeler efforts succeeded in making Tatum and Atkinson notorious on an international scale. Et que dire de George Atkinson, 43, responsable Lynn Swan et également ce qu'il a fait. We have been labeled as the criminal element of the game, which is, I think, unfair. I saw JT Thomas hit Ken Anderson out of bounds after play. The coach didn't label this as being dirty. He said that he was aggressive. I've seen Mel Blunt hit Cliff in the back of the head. I've seen Jack Lambert grab fellas by the face mask, but you can break a fellas neck. This is considered aggressive play as far as Pittsburgh is concerned. You know, when we play aggressive, we get labeled as dirty ball players. We've been labeled as cheap shot artists, criminals, and everything else. When we get out of professional football, we're going to have to do something else, but nobody wants a criminal. Nobody wants a criminal around them, you know, bad social influence or whatever. And uh, I think it's just, you know, unfair label that we've been stuck with. And uh, I think, you know, they were trying to get us to change our style of play, but uh, I don't think it's done that. We're going to still play our same aggressive type game, and uh, that's what I'm here for. I'm a professional athlete. I'm being paid to do a job, and I'm doing my job. It was a job the assassin and George Atkinson did well enough to reach the top of the football world in 1976. Number one, world champs, world champs. 